Let me tell y'all how a man can physically and mentally drain you. So when I was like 19, I started working as a correctional officer. And I went in with the mindset like, yeah, like these MSs can't do nothing for me. Like what a man in jail gonna do for me. You know what I'm saying? Like really have my big girl pennies on. And I just was not finna let nothing phase me. Cause you know when they go, when you go through the training, like OJT or whatever, you know, they tell you how these inmates are, how they can manipulate you, how they can do this, how they can do that. And I'm just thinking to myself, like, yeah, okay. But when you get in there, it's a whole fucking different story. And if you know, you know. But I was also a sweet girl. I wasn't finna let nobody fuck over me. I wasn't finna let nobody play me. But it became to a point to where I started talking too much. And that's where they get you. Never fucking talk too much. If you a CO, if you OJT, just let me tell you. I hope this land on the right side of TikTok. Well, Never talk too much. Because it landed it. on my YouTube page. It, I didn't look at it as like, you know, trying to be old friendly and, you know, trying to get to know them or flirting or nothing like that. I strictly looked at it as like, he a person, I'm a person. He talking, I'm going to talk too. Fuck it. That's where I went wrong. I should have just stayed strict. I should have just stayed being a bitch. And I would have never got myself into that shit. But anyways, to make a long story short, I ended up being with him. What? Uh, you know what I'm saying? Like, when he was in jail, we would talk or whatever, blah, blah, blah. And then, <clears throat> and then he snuck me. <laughs> now that I'm talking about this, I'm just very ashamed of myself. But I'm here being very transparent. Leave all them negative comments in the motherfucking pack. And if you got something fucking to say, keep fucking scrolling. Like, I was in the picket or whatever, and he was outside the picket. So, he started, like, signaling his mom number to me. Hey, B, hit me up after we get out. Yo, once I get out of here, you know, like, definitely give me a call. I didn't know how long that gonna be, but definitely hit me up. Here's my mom's number. Let me give it to you. 34512. Give me a call, all right? So, blah, 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 blah. He ended up getting switched to another facility. I was that deep in with him that I really fucked with him that I quit my job. I was making good fucking money. If you know, you know. So, when he transferred to another facility, I got in touch with his mom. His mom was like, okay, when he calls me, I'm going to throw you at a call and I'm going to let y'all talk. So when he called, she threw her at the call. We got on the phone and he was just like, hey, hey, like I missed you. How you been? Like blah, blah, blah. Like where you at? Like what you doing now? Did you quit? You still working there? And I was like, no, I quit. You know, I got me a little job somewhere else. I got a question for you. Is that his ring on your finger? How many keys you got? So anyways, <clears throat> we chopped it up for a little bit. And he was like, okay, well, set your phone up to this facility. Since you don't work no more, you can set your phone up. I can start calling you. So I was like, that's a bit cool. So we figured all that shit out, whatever. So we started talking more and more, getting locked in more and more. So he was like, when you get out, when he was like, when I get out, move to Dallas with me. At the time, I'm telling you, I was 19. I was vulnerable. I was fresh out of my last relationship. It was a lot going on. Don't fucking judge me. So I was like, what? I was like, no, are you fucking crazy? Like, I'm 19. What the fuck am I going to do with you out there? He was like, you do hair, you do this, you do that. You know, you get that shit jumping out there. And I was like, you know what, you right. So I started giving it thought. Giving it no, jail God, talk. please, no, and they believe no. that we could actually no. live out there together. No. So eventually, like, when he got out, I was like, okay, cool, whatever. I started packing my shit. My family started noticing because, like, I'm 19. I just graduated high school not too long ago. My family started noticing, like, hmm, what's she doing? What's she got going on? Eventually, they picked up to it, you know what I'm saying? Especially my mama. My mama taught me, caught me on the phone talking to him, and she broke my phone. I worked. I got a new one. Started talking to him some more behind my, behind my mama back. So, eventually, I started, every day, I started packing little shit every day to put in my trunk. Little shit every day. Monday, I would pack some shit, put it in my trunk. Tuesday, pack some shit, put it in my trunk. I didn't want to do everything at one time because I didn't want people to be like, what the fuck you doing? Literally, the only person that knew about this situation was my cousin. She was like, bro, you really going to move out there? And I was like, yeah, you know, I trust him. So, I moved out there. The, the, this, not the day he got out, but the day after he got out, I moved out there. I literally fucking moved 19 
still sleeping in a bed with my mama like young as fuck still learning about life like had good things going for me working there but i let a man persuade me to move out with him so i left like i just left i did not look back i left soon as i got down there like a month after i got down there shit started turning for the worse he would like spaz out on me he would like put his hands on me he would pull my fucking hair he would pull chunks of my hair one day i was in the mirror and i just started cutting out my hair just cutting it just cutting it. he walked in the restroom he was like i don't know why you cutting it i'ma still pull it like i was just like so fucking mentally drained i was i was at my worst we had came back to dallas when i mean to uh my hometown and to visit my family that was like the happiest day of my life because I was just like, I'm so drained out there. But I never told them that. I never told them nothing because I made that decision and I didn't want nobody to be like, you know what? You did that. You know, I didn't want nobody to say, I told you so. So I kept everything to myself. But when my mama seen me, she was like, you know, a mother knows. A mother knows. She was just like, you just look so, you don't look like yourself. She was like, look at your hair. Look at your clothes. Look at your skin. You're not glowing. Your freshness then left. Like, you just look drained. Although, like, it wasn't all bad out there, but it wasn't all good either. I had got into a shop, started working in a salon out there, started doing hair, started making money. But my relationship with him was so unstable that I had to quit that job. His, I was living with his mama. His mama kicked us out. We became homeless. We was living in my car. We didn't have no money to eat. I remember us going to McDonald's and we literally had to get one McDouble a piece. I started losing so much weight out there. I started smoking weed. Like, it was to the point of where I couldn't eat unless I smoked weed. I was literally not myself. And I'm so glad that I'm just not that person no more. So eventually, like, we went back to Dallas or whatever. Um, he was a veteran, so he was able to get us in a hotel to where, like, we could live there for a couple of months till we got on our feet. So after we moved in the hotel, I was like, can we just go back this weekend to visit my family? I was really plotting my escape. I literally left all my shit behind. Like, I didn't care because I didn't want him to be like, why are you taking all your shit? You know, if we just going this weekend to visit your family. So I left everything. When we got down there, an episode had happened to where I told my mama, I was like, you know, I want to stay for a week. Can I stay here with y'all for a week? And then I'll go back to Dallas. She was like, you know, you more than welcome to stay. So I was like, okay, well, can you explain that to so-and-so, my boyfriend at the time? So yeah, she was like, you can take the car, you can go back to Dallas. And then, you know, you can just pick her up like next week. He was not fucking having it. He said yes to my mama's face, but deep down, I already knew that it was going to be a problem. So I walked outside and I was like, babe, you know, you okay with that? Like, is everything all good? And I was like, I'm gonna ride with you to the store real quick. So we left and I got in the car with him and, you know, we get to the store or whatever. But as we come back from the store, I'm like, you haven't said nothing. Like, are you good? Like, is you okay with me staying with my family for a week? Like, he just like spazzed out he just spazzed out i don't even remember a lot of shit that happened i just remember like you know us having a pull on the side of the road because we fighting physically and he tripping like so hard and i was just like bro if you keep tripping i'm gonna run in these people yard and i'm gonna call the police i was just tired of being hit. i was just tired of him putting his hands on me like i was just I was just through with that shit. So I was like, I'm going to call the police. You're going to go back to jail. Why are you running? So he was like, you go in that people's yard. I swear to God, I'm going to shoot them. So like, I just get back in the car. I get back in the car. We get back in the yard. I'm just like, boo, crying. I'm like, granny, he going to shoot the people. He going to shoot the people. He splurs off in my car. Like, literally, he splurs off in my car. Mom was like, call the police. Call the police. He not just going to leave in her car like that. Whatever. So they called the police. The police looking for him in my car. And, you know, he eventually hid somewhere and and got away. His mama picked him up. He got away. Whatever. I say all this to say that, y'all, don't fall for no bullshit. Keep your head on the swivel because these men will literally mentally and physically drain you. You had a good job. You were told not to mess with the inmates. And what did you do? You messed with the inmate. 
You left a job and get a next job. And what did you do? You kept in touch with the dude. Your mom smashed your phone. And what did you do? You got a next phone. And you did what? You called the dude. The dude didn't call you. You called the dude. You called him. You slowly packed up your stuff day by day to do what? To go live where all the way in Texas. Where you from? I bet you I say from Texas, but you went to Texas. And while you're in Texas, what did you do? You stayed. You probably walk up to a nuclear factory, see all the signs on the wall that says, do not enter, radioactive, poison, chemical burst, not good, dress properly, and you will still enter the lot and do what? Sue the factory because you got hurt. You saw all the warnings on the wall. You saw all the red flags and you thought that they were green. What are you, colorblind? It's funny how some people put themselves in position that they don't need to be in and then blame it on someone else. Guys, am I being too hard on her? Let me know. Did this guy mentally and emotionally abuse her or did she mentally and emotionally abuse herself by seeing all the red flags and decide to ignore them? Let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below.